The tale begins when a guy named Ha Sachin Nim feels anxious while searching for the stone slate, and suddenly, arrows attack him and his companions. He dodged the arrows, but most of his companions got killed. He feels his sixth sense was right, and he should not have accepted the request to search the stone slate. A while ago, he was requested to bring back the hidden stone slate by the Muram Alliance, but he didn't like the idea. He trusts the Muram Alliance because no one practices more righteousness than the Muram Alliance. But the problem is that he doesn't have enough information about where the stone slate is. He was worried if he didn't have precise details, he couldn't make the right preparations, which would increase the risk of death, but he accepted the mission because he was offered a lot of gold. He was also offered the assistance of two of their strongest warriors, so he had no reason to decline the task. After reaching the place, they get attacked by the traps inside that place, and the warrior uses Spirit Blossom Sword to destroy an upcoming attack but he also yells about what was hiding in that place for those traps to be so annoying. Sachin tries to stop him from yelling because traps are not the only thing there, dangerous and unknown monsters are also there. Similarly, as he expected, a monster wakes up and kills the warrior by attacking with its weapon, which breaks the floor, and Sachin falls from it. After falling, he sees a tunnel and enters it to escape. Wondering if there are any traps there, he is instantly going to the next life. Suddenly he reaches the end of the tunnel and enters the room where the stone slate is. He gets happy to see the slate, and now, as instructed by Muram, he takes out some papers to copy what's written on the slate. But he can't find the brush and the ink for writing. He thinks he lost the things while reaching there, so he bites his finger to make it bleed and then copies the writing from the stone. Sachin cannot understand that language, although he has seen many different languages while working as a mercenary. This is the first time he's seeing something like that. He can't tell if he copied the writing rightly and tries to inspect the slate. But when he touches it with his bleeding finger, suddenly he hears a sound that the system is initiating. He gets scared that it's another booby trap, but he again hears that the system has fully booted and is starting user registration. He wonders what that sound is, but he feels like he is hearing it from inside his head for some reason. Suddenly a giant white tiger breaks into that place, and he terrifyingly wonders from where the tiger came because the only way to enter that room is a small tunnel. Since he managed to copy the slate, he decides to escape from there, dodging the tiger's attacks. He tries to escape through the tunnel, but the tiger suddenly hits him with its paw, and smashes him into the wall. He feels that all the bones in his body are broken and starts crying wondering if he will die like this in a cave by a monster after living a shitty life. He remembers he was born into one of the most renowned families in heaven and earth, the Great Ha family, so he could live his childhood without missing a meal. As he was the bastard, son, he grew up outside the gates of the main house, but he was still happy. However, the year he turned 12, his mother passed away, and the happiness ended. One day the main house summoned him, and that was when the hell began because he couldn't gather Kai due to the birth defect and the child born outside the family who couldn't learn martial arts had to live a life no different from the trash. Eventually, he escaped before anything worse could happen and began to live a life as a mercenary. He was not a mercenary by choice, but he still had a dream, which was to rule everything under the heavens. Now he doesn't have grandiose thoughts like that and wants to live a normal life, so he wants the tiger to let him live. Suddenly he hears a sound that the user registration is complete, but it doesn't matter to him because he thinks he is dying. Suddenly, he feels peace flowing through his body and feels cold and lonely. It somehow feels to him that he is submerged in the water, and when he opens his eyes, he realizes that he is sinking, so he immediately gets up. He is shocked to see himself sitting in a stream and remembers that it's the same place he used to live before he ran away. He gets shocked to see his shadow in the water because he looks young and realizes he is 12. Suddenly a voice congratulates Ha Sachin Nim for connecting to the martial arts library. But he starts yelling at the voice because he thinks the voice has been playing around with him since he went into that cave. The voice says it's the administration of the martial arts library, but Sachin thinks it's a master of martial arts playing with him, so he picks up a rock from the stream to be careful, but the voice replies it's not the case. Sachin is shocked that the voice could read his mind and wonders what kind of master could read others' minds. But suddenly, the voice replied that it was not a human and suddenly it appeared behind Sachin and introduced herself as the administrator of the first floor. She says her name is H. Wayan, and Sachin is shocked to see her. H. Wayan offers her greetings to Sachin, and when he asks if he can call her Miss H. Wayan, she replies that he can call her whatever he is comfortable with. When she asks if he believes what she said, Sachin thinks he died while completing a mission and regressed to his childhood. And on top of that, 
A woman so stunning that would ordinarily ignore him appeared, so he thinks it's a dream. H. Wei and appreciates his thoughts and says he is not dreaming, but he gets embarrassed remembering that she can read his thoughts, which is a skill that exceeds the scope of martial arts. In this situation, he directly asks her what in the world is the martial arts library, to which she replies that it's a library with the goal of collecting and sorting all martial arts. As the current user of the martial arts library, H. Wei and received the ability to read and edit the books contained within the library. H. Wei An is shocked, so he asks her if she is sure that she is not mistaken, but she confirms that he has completed the contract with the library. When she asks him if he did not smear the blood on the slate, he immediately remembers the time when he touched the slate with his bleeding finger. He asks where the martial arts library is and offers her to go with him because he wants to see what kind of place it is. She asks if he would like to enter the martial arts library, and he cannot understand what she is talking about because they are standing in the middle of the stream but he replies that he wants to. H. Wei and announces that the user's will is confirmed, and they enter the huge martial arts library, which shocks Sachin. She congratulates him on entering the library and tells him there are manuals not just from the central plane Sachin is presently in but collected from many worlds. Sachin can't believe there are so many martial arts books there, and when he picks out a book, he gets shocked to see the Namgung family's boundless azure sword technique because it was not even in the Muram Alliance's library. He also sees the Hebei Province Peng family's flowing origin thunderbolt art, Xinchem Province's Yang family Yang spear art, and the Ha family's thunder sound art books there. Ha family's book is just a basic martial arts book, but Sachin thinks that for a person like him who can't gather Kai, it's an art where he can only imitate the form. So he furiously throws the book and yells, so what if he has access to the greatest martial arts library in the world because he can't even use them since he can't gather Kai? When H. Wei An asks if he is alright, he apologizes for getting lost in anger. He tells himself not to lose hope as he lived all his life as a danchen and experienced all the frustrations that came with it, so he thinks it's not the time to get caught up in things like these. He starts to think about what to do with this priceless treasure, and immediately, he gets an idea. He asks her if they are the keepers of the library, so it is possible for they can find specific manuals, to which she replies that it's possible with the search function. He wants to use the search operation, so he asks her if she can search the martial arts book that people without a danchen can learn. She immediately conducts a search that contains the user's specifications, and as the search completes, the system shows the results of 1027 books. Sachin first feels shocked and then pleased to know there were this many martial arts he could have learned. He starts wondering if so many books came out of the first floor, then how many floors are there in the library, and he might not be able to finish reading his whole life. The secondary search starts and H. Wei In instruct him to input his search filters, so he selects combat art and understands during the first search. He doesn't put any filter, so the system searches so many books. H. Wei In explains he can undo the filter by clicking again on it, and if he clicks and holds, he can also see the subcategories of each art form. She says that most manuals have multiple categories, so he should look carefully and gives an example that some combat arts are also related to external arts. He can find these arts by searching for just one category, but if he filters for both categories, he'll find only the arts that are related to both. Sachin understands that he has to make his search specific to find what he wants and that there are so many books because things like weapons and external arts are mixed. He only wants Kai or something that gives equivalent power, so he adds the filter and the system immediately shows that there are 12 volumes of learning martial arts without Danchen. He tells H. Wei In to show him the books immediately, and she instantly presents all 12 books in front of him. He has never seen those books before and picks out a book with an impressive name Heavenly Divine Art. H. Wei In says he picked a really good book out of 12 results from his search, and this is the only one where the original is saved in the library. While he goes through the book, a caution suddenly appears that the user's remaining usage time is almost over. Sachin is shocked to see the caution and thinks he'll be unable to return to the place, but H. Wei In says that by his Earth time standards, he has to wait one day to enter the library again. He felt relieved, but she reminded him that the books he'll take couldn't be read outside the library unless he rented them. He wants to look at the other manuals, but he doesn't have time, and on top of that, Heavenly Divine Art is the book that H. Wei In also said is good, so he decides to rent it out. H. Wei In approves his request and rents him the book for one month. Meanwhile, his martial arts library usage time depleted, and he returned to the stream feeling as if nothing happened and immediately started calling H. Wei In.
but he couldn't see her there. Simultaneously, his escort calls him a young master, and after seeing his escort Wusung, Sachin remembers that Wusung died in the past. In the past life, his escort was searching for him when the general arrived and yelled at him because he told him to be in convoy with the Sichuan Tang family. Wusung apologized to the general because he wanted to report to the young master Sachin before he left. Still, the general scolded him that the house orders were more important than the young master and ordered him to escort the convoy carriage. On the other hand, Sachin was getting beaten by a guy in an alley of the area where the escort was searching for him, and the guy mocked him for acting tough and thinking that his escort would save him but told him that he was on a mission that day. Sachin knew that people only did that to torment him, and the head of the family also knew about that, but he never paid any attention. After some while, the guy told Sachin that his escort got hurt during the mission, and he immediately ran to inquire about his escort, but he fell on his way. He tried to get up, but when he looked up, he was shocked to see his escort's dead body in front of him. Back to the present, after seeing his escort alive, Sachin excitedly hugs him and understands that he has returned to his past. Wusung thinks something unpleasant happened to his master, so he instantly takes out candied fruit for Sachin which Sachin grabs from him and starts eating. Sachin remembers that the escort used to buy him his favorite candid fruit, but after the escort's death, he stopped eating that fruit because it always reminded him of the escort who died for him. This time, Sachin decides to live a different life and kill those who bullied him for not having Danchen, so he makes the world remember his name, Sachin. After some while, he reaches his house in a small rural village where he lived until he was 12, and he remembers it's the time after his mother passed away and right before the time he entered the gates of the Ha house. He thinks it would have been nicer to return to an earlier time in life, and when the escort, Wu Sung, asks him if he is alright, he replies that he is fine and asks Wu Sung to rest while he enters the house first. He enters the house, lies on his bed, and remembers what he went through. But suddenly, he gets up because he wants to know where Miss H Wei in disappeared. He understands that there is no way this is all a dream, and he also hears H Wei In's voice confirming that it's not a dream. He immediately starts to look here and there for her and asks where she is, but she tells him there is no need for him to be surprised because she'll converse with him no matter where he is. He asks if it's some telepathy, and she says that it's a kind of telepathy without the distance restriction, and she would prefer that they keep talking like that in the future. He understands her, but he also asks her if he doesn't know how to access the manual he borrowed from the library, so after some pause, she asks if he would like to read the Manual of Heavenly Divine Art. Sachin replies that he immediately wants to read it because the faster he reads it, the better since the system mentioned the rental period. He decides to memorize everything since he never learned any martial arts, and as the system starts transmitting the information, Sachin feels immense pain in his head. After a few minutes, the system announces that Sachin has obtained Heavenly Divine Art, and he is shocked at the fact that he only saw the book title but somehow memorized it all. H. Wei-in says that all the information in the Heavenly Divine Art Manual has been transferred to his mind, and he is happy because it's just the type of thing he was looking for. While training at night, he didn't know that Heavenly Divine Art would use true origin energy because, unlike inner energy that a person can obtain by accumulating Kai through breathing techniques, origin energy is something fundamentally that humans are naturally born with. A person can die if he consumes all of his original energy, so it should not be used lightly. Sachin knows that according to the writer of the book, the myth that a person will die once he uses all of his original energy comes from the fact that martial artists don't know how to properly use their middle danchen. The book says a person will be fine if he uses origin energy through his middle dantane. But most martial artists, to use origin energy, break their middle danchen. Sachin feels strength in his body and he can feel the origin energy, but his body is still too weak to use the origin energy. Since origin energy is tied to my vitality, he needs to strengthen his body. Suddenly he realizes that his original energy has become much stronger, and he can't believe how it's possible. H. Wei-in says that the martial arts library makes it easier to learn any lesson from a rented book, and it also helps him to remember what he needs. Sachin feels the martial arts library is amazing because it can immediately help him learn martial arts. But for some reason, he also feels it's scary, and that scary thing is his now. Suddenly he worryingly asks H. Wei-in if he will forget what he learned from the book when the rental period ends, and she replies he will. Sachin feels devastated, but she says that only things like instantly recalling will disappear, but the things that he fully comprehended will remain. He feels relieved that even if he returns the book, the martial arts will stay, 
and he needs to learn all of it before he returns it, so the first thing he has to do is improve his body. In the morning, Wusun wakes up and decides to train before the young master wakes up, but suddenly, he hears Sachin calling him. After seeing Sachin lying on the ground and asking for water, he immediately gives him water, and Sachin feels the water tastes good after hard work. When Wusung asks him if he has eaten something bad, Sachin jokingly replies that the candied fruit he gave him yesterday was rotten. He says that he is fine, but Wusung asks him why he is behaving to him strangely because he has been his escort for seven years, and no one knows Sachin better than him and knows that Sachin studied day and night because he couldn't gather energy and asks why Sachin is training all of a sudden. Sachin lived a life without a purpose, so now he wants to change and Wusun is shocked to hear this. In his first life, Sachin started training only when he left the house, but he kept being mocked by the Ha family. However, once he was outside the gates, the timid and weak person that he was didn't have the strength to do anything. He picked up food from a shop to eat, and the shopkeeper kicked him for stealing the food, but suddenly someone paid for his food, and that was the time he met his savior. However, he couldn't teach Sachin martial arts because of his lack of internal energy in him, but he taught him how to train and fight. However, he thinks the teachings of his savior failed because he died without accomplishing anything. But now he is young, so he still wants to work hard and live a different life. He says to Wusung that he is going to train his body without giving up, and Wusung happily hugs him because he thinks Sachin has made a good decision and thinks if his mother saw him now, she would be so happy. Sachin starts practicing and thinks that only three months are left before he returns to the main house, so he needs to become stronger if he wants to survive in that terrifying place. Three months later, he reaches the gates of Ha family's main house and remembers that in his past life, when he first came there, he was so troubled by his mother's death that he didn't pay any attention, and that wasn't a nice place that could give comfort to a grieving child. Meanwhile, Sachin is starting at the house's gate, and the Ha family's fourth son, Ha Jinho arrives with his escorts. Sachin remembers that Jinho was originally the third prince, but after Sachin's birth, he became the fourth prince, and he relentlessly tormented Sachin because of that. He yells that he is the third prince, but Sachin says Jinho is younger than him, so he is the fourth prince. When Jinho doesn't believe him, Sachin asks him how old he is, and he replies that the next year he'll turn 12. Sachin reminds them that he is already 12 years, but Jinho furiously objects that just because Sachin is older doesn't mean he is Hyun, and says he could never call a bastard weaker than him Hyun. Jinho mocks Sachin, saying he can't beat him and that he cannot gather Kai, and people call him half a penny. Jinho's escorts start laughing and Sachin understands he is trying to look good in front of his escort and feels that Jinho's immaturity is the same as ever. When Sachin asks if he'll call someone stronger than him Hyung then, he replies that he'll, but that person also has to be older than him, so Sachin says that he better calls him Hyung because he is stronger and older than Jinho. Jinho furiously tries to punch Sachin, but he dodges it, and Jinho is shocked to see this. However, Sachin thinks Jinho's short temper is the same as before. Jinho says he is only going to give his greetings, but Sachin knows that he would have offered to show him around the house and beat him up. He tells Sachin to follow him and takes him to the battleground, where he gives him a wooden sword to have a duel. Meanwhile, people know that he is doing this because he became the fourth prince after the arrival of the third prince. Sachin, and when Jinho runs to attack, Sachin asks him if he wants to spar. Jinho offendedly replies that he wants to put Sachin in his place, and then Sachin suggests, if they are doing this, they should wager on it as well and ask what Jinho will do if Sachin wins. Jinho makes all the people their witnesses and says he'll listen to one of Sachin's requests if he wins, no matter what it is but he says that Sachin has to kneel before him if he wins. Sachin confidently accepts the terms, and Jinho runs to attack him while thinking that he has trained in the family's visual art since he was five, and people always tell him that he is much stronger than other people of his age. Jinho tries to stop Sachin with his sword, which Sachin immediately stops with his sword, and when he tries to attack again, Sachin stops it again but tries to kick his face. Sachin immediately guards his face with his arms, and Jinho cannot believe he is guarding all his attacks and wonders if Sachin learned martial arts secretly. Sachin managed to hit Jinho, but Jinho also took hold of himself from falling again. However, Jinho gets offended and attacks Sachin with thundering shadow sword art, but Sachin immediately punches him, surprising everyone, and they'll cheer him. Jinho's jaw hurts badly, and as Sachin wins the match, he reminds Jinho has to fulfill his request, but Jinho doesn't acknowledge his win and wants to have a rematch. Sachin does not care what people say because the audience already decided on their winner, 
and reminds Jinho if he refuses to admit defeat, he'll have to have bigger losses. Jinho knows Sachin is right, but when Sachin tells his wish that he wants Jinho to call him Hyam, he feels furious. Sachin disappeared while Wusung was busy doing the entry procedure, and now, while searching for him, Wusung hears two persons saying that the third and fourth princes are sparring in the sparring hall. Wusung is shocked to listen to what they say, and in the meantime, Sachin warns Jinho to quickly call him Hyam, but Jinho claims that Sachin cheated. He says they were sparring with the sword, but Sachin used his fist, and it's cheating, but Sachin knows he is just a whiny child because he also tried to kick Sachin first. Jinho knows that if he leaves as a loser, he will never be able to hold his head up high again. But shockingly, Sachin tells him to come at him again and decides not to give him a chance to complain about anything this time. Jinho doesn't know how Sachin won, but he thinks Sachin found a way to gain something similar to internal energy, so he also decides to use the strongest sword technique against Sachin. Sachin can feel an immediate change in Jinho's power, and when Jinho tries to attack him, he dodges it and feels an increase in speed and strength of Jinho. Jinho says that it's too early to be surprised, and Sachin thinks Jinho's movements are natural, like flowing water, and feels Jinho deserves to be called the hope of the family. However, Sachin also knows that Jinho doesn't have any of the flexibility or ruthlessness that Sachin learned during his life as a mercenary, so when Jinho tries to stab him, he moves a bit differently and kills Jinho's flow. Sachin kicks Jinho to make it even because in the previous spar, he also kicked him, and now Sachin is going to fight the duel with a sword as Jinho wanted and immediately stab him down. Wusung is shocked that his young master won against Jinho, but Jinho's escorts are shocked to see that their master lost. They immediately run to pick up their master and take him to the infirmary, while Sachin feels good because it was his life's wish to beat the shit out of him. Suddenly the system shows that it saved the battle with Jinho, as recorded in the martial arts library, and Sachin receives an elixir as a reward. Sachin is happy to accept the elixir because it's a miraculous medicine that gives many benefits, and some items improve the body and increase internal energy. Sachin knows that elixirs are expensive because, in his past life, even selling a medium-level elixir would give him enough money to play around for several months. Still, in this life, he can increase his vitality and strengthen his original energy using an elixir. Suddenly he sees Wusung running towards him, whom he almost forgot about, and Wusung examines if his master got hurt in a duel. Sachin says there is no need to worry because he won the fight without getting hurt, and Wusung says it's amazing to think that Sachin got ahead of the fourth prince in just three months. However, Sachin believes he is still lacking as he won because it was Ha Jinho, and if it was the first or second prince or the youngest prince, it wouldn't have been possible. He decides to become stronger if he wants to compete with them. After some while, he goes to his room and asks the servant if anyone from the elders or the lord summoned him, but she replies that no one called him. After she leaves, he thinks that he made a big ruckus on the first day, but nothing is different from the past, so he decides to check the elixirs he gained earlier and calls Miss H. Wei in. Suddenly H. Wei in appears, and when she asks if he wants to receive an elixir, he immediately replies that he wants to use it. But he then stops and asks her if the system gave him an elixir as a reward for the recording, so he asks what it means by the record. She asks if he would like to check the record and immediately takes him to a place, making him wonder where they are but suddenly, he gets shocked to see another self of him there. Sachin can't believe he is looking at the recording of his fight with Jinho they had earlier, and understands what the system meant by the record. Sachin thinks it's amazing because the fight is unfolding in front of him. H. Wei An also says that the library can record and save all the battles the user experiences, and the user can also replay them whenever he wants. Suddenly Sachin gets scared by the Thunder Sword attack Jinho, and H. Wei In says he can also experience the record directly like this. After seeing Jinho's attack for the second time, Sachin thinks it's an amazing martial art, so he decides to use his advanced skill properly against Jinho in the recording and destroys Jinho with a powerful stab. Sachin gets surprised that even the feeling of hitting feels real, and the system made it like it's a real person and wonders why the library saves something like this. H. Wei In says that the martial arts library was built to obtain records of all martial arts in the world, but there is not much point in just reading forms in a book since practicing martial arts would need an opponent. Therefore to transmit information more accurately, the library also realistically records battles. Sachin understands that in exchange for martial arts library helping the user, the user contributes to the library in the form of the recordings, and the reason it gives Elixir is the compensation for leaving behind a recording. 
H. Wayan says he is right, but he won't get compensated every time because earlier, he received an elixir for creating his first recording. Still, in the future, the library will evaluate whether or not it should give him an elixir. By evaluation, she means that the library will determine how much he contributed each time. For example, if he finds a martial art currently not contained in the library, he'll be rewarded tremendously. H. Wayan starts to check how much he'll be rewarded for his first recording, and after some while, when Wusun arrives and calls him, he feels like Sachin's complexion has suddenly improved. A while ago, when H. Wayan checked his reward, he obtained an old medicine made from 50 years old ginseng Sachin knew that it was nothing compared to the thousand-year-old ginseng of the legends. Still, he also knew something of that rare level around the Murim. After eating the pill, it was not easy for him to integrate it with his innate heavenly martial arts, but his combat abilities improved and became stronger. When Sachin asks Wusung why he is calling for him late in the night, Wusung gets aside, and Sachin gets shocked to see the messenger who tells him that the head of the family is calling for him. While going to meet the head of the family, Sachin feels puzzled because no matter what he does, the head Ha Moryong never had an ounce of interest, and Sachin never considered him his father. Sachin worries that Ha Moryong might call him because he beat the shit out of Ha Jinho, and he wishes to turn back thinking he called him for suck a small issue, but he cannot. Moryong calls him inside his room, and after entering the room, Sachin pays his respects to the head of the family. When Moryong says it's been a while, Sachin gets shocked because they are meeting for the first time and wonders if Moryong knows about his past life, but when Moryong says he saw Sachin once as a child, Sachin feels relieved. When Moryong asks if he beat Jinho in a spar, he replies he did, so Moryong asks how he did it because he has no danchen and no proper knowledge about martial arts. Sachin is shocked, and Moryong yells at him to tell him how he did that because some people are saying he did that by using a cowardly method. Sachin says there is nothing like that because he stumbles upon a small fateful encounter, since he has to keep showing his strength. He gives Moryong a general overview while omitting details about the martial arts library. Suddenly Moryong tells him to leave, and while leaving, Sachin wonders why he didn't ask him about the encounter, although he was not planning to tell the whole truth. On the other hand, Moryong asks his younger brother and advisor Ha Mujin what they should do. Mujin says it's a fateful encounter, but before he completes his sentence, Moryong understands what he will say, so he furiously breaks the cup in his hand. Mujin says that he never expected his sister-in-law to leave behind martial arts, however, it's surprising that a child who hasn't even practiced martial arts for three months managed to defeat Jinho. Moryong suspects that Sachin was practicing all along, and when Mujin asks him if he is suggesting that the report of Sachin's victory was a lie, he replies that he doesn't know about that. Suddenly Mujin asks if Sachin's relatives from his mother's side may be involved. Moryong yells that it's nonsense because they were all killed in the fire. Mujin suspects there might be a survivor, but Moryong thinks they would have come and taken Sachin themselves if so. Moryong believes that they didn't know the child existed in the first place, and if they knew, why would they leave him unattended until now? Mujin thinks that Sachin didn't want to get involved with his maternal family. Moryong tells him to stay cautious and deploy additional personnel to closely monitor Sachin and report back to him and Mujin after taking orders disappear in the air. No matter how much Moryong thinks about it, it doesn't seem to him that Sachin received external help because there is no way he could have snuck past their observation and made contact with the outside. He suspects Sachin may have become stronger on his own because the bloodline doesn't lie after all. A while later, Sachin is training in the training ground to increase his physical strength because for him to survive there, he is not strong enough. He practices hard continuously and finally manages to use his internal strength, not Kai but rather his innate skills, which are even better. He is happy because innate skill can exert more than twice the power compared to using the same amount of Kai, but he doesn't know the proper martial arts to use it. He still has experience from his mercenary day. However, as he progresses, he'll need more systematic and advanced martial arts that align with his innate skills. He tells Administrator H. Wayan that he would like to access the martial arts library, and she immediately enters him into the library. He wants to use the search function as he is looking for a martial art that allows two different martial arts to be performed simultaneously, like the divine martial arts of the Wu Dang sect. Sachin knows it's important to learn every martial art in the library, so he thinks it's better to delve deep into one efficient martial art. 
H. Wayan starts the search process, but unfortunately, they don't find anything like that in the library. And H. Wayan clears that just because it's a martial arts library doesn't mean that every martial art exists. She says that the library reappeared after a hundred years, so it's impossible to know what new or transformed martial arts have emerged in the present time. She says that the martial art Sachin thinks of does exist in the library, but he can't claim them because they are only on the first floor of the library, and the divine martial arts are stored on the third floor of the library. She explains that the users who sign a contract with the library are divided into five ranks, starting from the lowest of one star to five stars, and the number of stars represents the number of floors they can access. Sachin's rank is only one star, so H. Wayan suggests he not get too discouraged because he has become a user of the library just recently. And still, a total of 3% library is stored on the first floor. He gets excited that if it's only 3%, he'll have infinite martial arts to obtain. H. Wayan says Sachin is a remarkable man with great ambitions, and as Sachin has not much time left, he asks her a last question about how to increase his rank. She says that it's simply by contributing to the martial arts library, like registering a new martial art or leaving combat records as he did before. She says that when his contribution reaches a certain level, he can challenge the trials of each floor's administrator, and once he passes the trial, he can ascend to the next rank. He can't understand what trial she is talking about, so she immediately snaps, which makes Sachin faint. And when he wakes up, they are in the trial room where a child trial is present. If he defeats the child, he can become a two-star user, but he believes he is 30 years old and the child looks only 5 years old. H. Wayan says that if he challenges the child right now and wins, it'll be considered a pass, so he gets ready for the trial. The trial starts, and the kid immediately attacks him with Heavenly Demon Breaking Plan making Sachin stamp back into the wall. Sachin thinks the kid's strength is unbelievable, but suddenly he feels no one is there. Meanwhile, H. Wayan says that the place they are present is part of the library, and everything is an illusion. And he understands that everything he experiences is an illusion. Suddenly the kid says that his trial is not over, and H. Wayan reminds him that he'll get hurt or killed there but the child is prepared to face him with the intent to kill him. Sachin asks the administrator if that isn't going too far because it doesn't make and asks where in the world she found a five-year-old like that trial child. She jokingly replies he is right because the kid is seven years old, but Sachin says it doesn't matter and remembers that the kid was quite far away at first. But in an instant, her attack came flying toward him. He can't believe that this girl can use Tanky at such a young age, and while he is lost in his thoughts, she kicks his face, and with heavenly demon breaking palm, she shames him on the ground. Sachin is not feeling any pain, but he thinks avoiding or blocking her technique is impossible. So he recalls the name heavenly demon breaking palm of the method and wonders if it could be a record of the heavenly demon's childhood. While she is going to punch him again, Sachin yells to end the challenge, and H. Wayan asks if he is going to end the challenge to which he replies that for now, he is ending it. But he'll challenge again. He knows that if there were any disadvantages to failing, the administrator wouldn't have lightly recommended it. H. Wayan says he is right because once he is qualified, he can challenge it again. H. Wayan finishes the trial by vanishing the trial child and takes Sachin back to the library. Sachin decides to step back, but he'll keep training to stand on top of those who look down on him. The benefactor who changed his life in the past was a girl, and he wanted to save her life, so he decided to work hard to pass the trials given by the administrator. H. Wayan says Sachin has a very positive mindset, and that's why she likes him, but she says he might be a little paranoid sometimes. Sachin asks her for a favor to recommend to him the martial art of her choosing, and if possible, he asks for something that can go well with the heavenly martial arts. After thinking for a while, she takes the Supreme Sword of the World Martial Arts book for Sachin and tells them it's a special book. Sachin sees the book is extremely worn out, and almost half of it is torn, but still, he decides not to question it because it's a book recommended by the administrator H. Wayan. H. Wayan tells Sachin that she has no choice since she couldn't just give him anything without any backlash, and when Sachin inquires about the backlash, she says he doesn't have to worry about it. Sachin asks if she is referring to the little one earlier, and asks if it is the martial arts of the unorthodox demonic cult that could pose a problem. Still, as she knows that Sachin is from the Orthodox sect, it wouldn't be appropriate to teach the martial arts of the unorthodox sect to him, so she assures him that the books she is recommending are from the Orthodox sect's martial art. Sachin thanks her for taking care of it, and when he gratefully accepts it, she passes it on to him, and he feels a shock in his head. 
he thinks the pain is more tolerable than the first time. But as expected, the feeling of knowledge entering his head is unpleasant. As the transmission process completes, he feels that this martial art is incredible and asks her the name of it, which is the supreme sword of the world. She elaborates that it dates back over 150 years, and it's the martial arts of a legendary warrior, who was once called the greatest in the world. Sachin gets excited, but he asks her whether that data in his head is correct because there are only three sections, to which she replies that it was separated on purpose because it's originally stored on the second floor. Sachin is shocked that she gave him a book from the second floor, and she says that it's why he could only give him a portion of this book to avoid backlash from the administrator of the second floor. She tells him to consider it a gift given to a user after a hundred tears, so he thanks her for her kindness, and she wishes everyone could be like him. When Sachin asks what she is thinking, she replies that she is thinking about the previous user before Sachin, who was arrogant and disrespectful. She says that the last user was big in size, relied only on his strength, and was a low-quality individual. Suddenly a frightening voice asks him what did she say, and suddenly, that previous user appears there, and Sachin gets terrified to see him. The previous user forcefully opened the door to the library, and tried to get in, but H. Wayan immediately shut it down. After the door closed, Sachin asked the administrator who that person was. She tells him not to worry because this happens sometimes, and in the meantime, his library usage duration ends. Sachin still wanted to ask something, but he got sent back to where he originally was, and the wooden dummies were still destroyed, from which he understands that time doesn't pass while he is inside the martial arts library. Sachin remembers the face of the man he saw in the library and wonders why he looks so familiar, but he leaves that and starts mastering the supreme sword of the world. He thinks the book's name is truly a great name for a sword technique and starts practicing by infusing it with his innate heavenly martial arts. While practicing, he feels it was designed to use innate energy cultivation from the start, as if the cultivation and martial arts complement each other. First, he practices the infinite revolving heavens technique, seizing control of a specific area, a form that deflects all attacks within the space. He then practices the second form, infinite pressure of the heavens, gathering and surrounding the sword with martial arts energy to crush and completely overwhelm the enemy. Finally, in the third form, infinite crown of the heavens, he practices an unbelievable piercing technique and gets excited to master Tanky. He can't believe he did it and thinks he is a genius because he learned Tanky just three months after discovering the divine martial arts. He says it might be because of the elixir, but he immediately shakes that thought off because no matter what a person consumes, it's uncommon to use Tanky. He will try the infinite crown of heaven one more time, but he fails to use it and he is shocked. However, he tries to use it repeatedly. But he fails every time he tries, and he can't understand why it's not working now because it worked before. He can use all the other forms but can't understand why only the third form is not happening. Suddenly, he wonders why three different forms with three different uses and powers were bundled together. He thinks that the problem may be related to all three forms and might be a matter of distinguishing them. Sachin again starts the practice and assumes that the three forms are all part of a single movement, and channeling energy through the infinite revolving heavens spreads the energy. He understands that compressing energy through the infinite pressure of the heavens gathers the energy, and the infinite crown of the heavens releases the energy. After knowing that the supreme sword of the world is a profound martial art based on immense Kai, he feels he can do it, and when he is going to master it, Wusung suddenly arrives there and calls him. Wusung wants to inquire about his meeting with the family head, but Sachin is furious that he interrupted him just because he wants to know. Wusung informs that someone wants to meet the young master and Sachin wonders who has come to meet him this late. Wusung says that it's the young master Ha Myung Wu hiding behind Wusung, who wants to meet Sachin. He gets terrified because he only heard rumors about Ha Myung Wu in his past life, but he never had any contact with him. He remembers him because of the intense conflict between the orthodox sect and the Ha family due to their fierce rivalry. He recalled that Rakshasa's sword was the name given to the ultimate warrior of the demon cult. He became a vengeful demon after losing his brother to the unorthodox sect. He mercilessly slaughtered members of the unorthodox sect indiscriminately, so his strength and cruelty were enough to earn him the name Rakshasa. Back to the present, Sachin is terrified because the subject of those rumors, the legendary Rakshasa's sword, is in front of his eyes. Sachin starts sweating to see him peeking from behind Wusung. But Ha Meng Wu, with a pleasant smile, calls Sachin Hyun, and he feels relieved. 